In her role as permanent representative of the African Union mission in Washington, D.C., Her Excellency Arikana Chihomborikwao, M.D., worked tirelessly towards fulfilling her mandate, which was to undertake, develop and maintain relationships between the African Union and the executive and legislative branches of the U.S. government, the African Diplomatic Corps, the Africans in the diaspora, and the Bretton Woods institutions. This was specially in relation to the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area and advancing the priority areas of Agenda 2063. In fulfilling this mandate, she brought renewed energy to the AU mission as well as new ideas and programs that were implemented since her appointment in 2016 to her departure in 2019. Her efforts at mobilizing the diaspora as people of African descent and not as citizens of any single African country is unprecedented and exemplifies her ability to unify people around a common goal, speaking with one voice as one Africa and one continent. Additionally, her Excellency Ambassador Arikana Chihombori Kwao, MD, has been actively involved in various programs and projects of the African Union. In 2012, she became the chair of the African Union African Diaspora Health Initiative, where she was involved in mobilizing the African Diaspora Health professionals to assist in addressing healthcare needs of the African continent. Even prior to her departure as AU ambassador, her contributions to the cause of Africa had earned Her Excellency Arikana Chihombori Kwao, MD, many prestigious honors and awards. Two of her most cherished ones are an Achievement Award received in 1996 from the incumbent president at the time, His Excellency the late President Nelson Mandela of the Republic of South Africa and the African Woman of Excellence Award in July 2015 during the AU Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa. She received this award alongside 15 other prominent African women, including the former President of Liberia, Madame Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the former President of the Republic of Malawi, Madame Joyce Banda, and Mrs. Winnie Mandela, former First Lady of the Republic of South Africa. She has firmly established herself as an advocate for women. In 2012, at an international conference for women, Her Excellency Ambassador Arikana Chihambori Kwao, MD, represented Africa in Mardel Plata, Argentina, where she delivered a rousing speech on violence against women. During this meeting, she shared the stage with two Nobel Prize winners, Adolfo Perez Esquivel from Argentina and Rigoberta Menchu from Guatemala. In addition to the above honors, during her three-year tenure as AU Ambassador to the United States, Her Excellency Ambassador Arikana Chihombori Kwao, MD, won over 70 awards and attestations from various organizations within the Americas, including Ambassador of the Year from Howard University. She also received numerous recognitions from members of Congress as well as governors, mayors, and county executives from across the United States. In January 2020, after being featured having a profile in Courage, Her Excellency Ambassador Arikana Chihombori Kwao was honored to be named 2019 Person of the Year by The Guardian newspaper, which is the largest newspaper in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nigeria is the largest country in Africa with a population of over 200.96 million people. Prior to her appointment, Her Excellency was a renowned family medicine doctor in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, in the United States, where she practiced medicine for over 26 years. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Family Physicians and a member of the American Association of Family Physicians, as well as the Tennessee Association of Family Physicians. She is married and the proud mother of five children. Hello there, this is Aurel Ofori, host of your favorite human interest chat show, 
Today we have the honor of having for our very special guest, Madame Arikana Chihambori Kwao, former African Union permanent representative to the USA. Thank you for being on the African Dream Alarm. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Like we say in Ghana, Medase se wa mame abaufi eno akchuche enkomo kakra. That is the tree language for thank you for welcoming me into your house to have this short conversation. So um, let me start off. You've been uh, recently named 2019 Guardian Person of the Year by the reputed Nigerian newspaper called The Guardian. Right. How does that make you feel? That was very nice of them. Uh, it was uh, quite an honor, especially after the uh, tumultuous year that I've had. Uh, so it was good to have the year end uh, with the bang and uh, such a um, such a notable recognition, so I'm very grateful. 2019 was an amazing year, difficult as it might have been, but you all came out in full force to support me uh, as I was getting ready to leave the African Union mission in Washington, D.C. On behalf of myself and my husband and my family, I want to sincerely thank you for all the support that you have given me in 2019 and the support you continue to give me to this very day. Let's continue to work together. You have my word that anything that I can do to unite us. I understand we are in the valley, but we will make it to the mountain top. Together, let's do it. Let's support each other. Let's come together. Let's speak with one voice and let's let Mother Africa know that her children are ready to come home. Tell us, um, you are a Pan-Africanist. I would like to think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are I you, love my Africa. <laughs> are, you, um, are you a member of any Pan-African institution or organization? Not that I know of. Okay, okay. Now, um, a lot of, uh, the reason I ask is because a lot of concerns have been raised um, for your security and well-being ever since you um, took over the AU um, permanent ambassador position uh, to the USA and you started speaking vociferously um, about the French and you know, other European um, countries and how they've been sort of like um, sitting on the progress of Africa, especially economically. Right. And people felt very enlightened, became very enlightened to that fact and that reality. And even more important, it wasn't a topic that was a go-to area for many people. Absolutely. And you sort of like opened the door for people to come to that realization and also set their mind towards thinking about that and people are like what if the French get you know mad at her and decide to get rid of her it's a hard question but it, it, it is a <laughs> difficult question but you know um, the platform was too big for me to not use it I was sent here to uh, promote Africa and the Americas mm -hmm. uh, to uh, mobilize the African diaspora to participate in the um, development of Africa and if I was quiet, then that meant 1.27 billion people were voiceless. That meant 250 million African diaspora in the Americas were also voiceless. It was not an easy decision. Uh, initially, I came to Washington with a clean slate. I wasn't quite sure what difference I could make. Uh, but as I started traveling around the country, and I saw the hopelessness and uh, the lack of uh, full appreciation and understanding of Africa, not only by the uh, continental Africans, but also the African Americans and the white Americans as well, particularly the business community, and realizing that their failure to engage Africa in a meaningful way was rooted on our ignorance of Africa. So there's been a lot of calls for your reinstatement. When you were kicked out of office, there was a campaign launched online that was signed by over 100,000 people calling for you to be reinstated. Um, a few months down the line, lots of these people have rechanneled their energies and they're saying you should, you know, actually become the uh, uh, AU yes. yeah, chairperson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it something you've given a talk to? You know, it's funny you should say that. Many people have actually come to me and said, well, since you are not reinstated, we think you should go and uh, uh, run for the African Union uh, Commission Chair. Right. Uh, it's nothing that I'd ever uh, uh, considered. Uh, I mean, my whole journey, uh, 
in this in this process it's nothing that i ever even considered being an ambassador i never imagined that i could be asked to be an ambassador uh, and so so being a chairman of the african union commission the drumbeat is getting louder among the african diaspora but it's definitely nothing that i ever had I'd ever considered let me step on your feet and ask this question again in a different way a lot of people on the continent say for the continent to move forward it will need a lot of people in the diaspora coming home to contribute. Right. You are a person in the diaspora. Correct. The continent is calling for you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying to Africa? Well, let me say this. There is definitely need for disruption uh, in the status quo. Um, we can't continue the way things are uh, in Africa. We can't continue to sit back and continue to be abused and and, uh, and exploited. Something has got to give. Mm. And if it takes the diaspora moving into Africa, I am suggesting that diaspora and recommending very strongly that diaspora in various countries should consider running as parliamentarians. They should consider running as governors, as senators. But the diaspora also must realize for diaspora to go home and run effective campaigns, they need the financial support. It is just that simple which is why the diaspora do not have a choice but to unite. We've got to come together as a strong African diaspora. We must answer the call from our African heads of states to come back home. We need to unite, just like other ethnic groups, particularly in this country uh, of the United States. We live with other ethnic groups that are very united. They stick together like super glue mm. when it comes to uh, their countries of origin. It's only us black people who are too busy running away from Africa. That has got to change. How we get our respect depends on how we come together and speak with one voice. But also, when it's all said and done, it's about the economics. We have got to pull our funds together. We have got to reclaim our economic liberation, which is the one thing that has kept us from taking our continent to a rightful place on the world stage, which is the one thing that gives them the ammunition and justification to continue to disrespect us as a race worldwide. That has to change, and only we can bring that change. What do you feel about the diaspora vote? Um, a lot of people, especially Africans in the diaspora, not only in the U.S., but literally everywhere that has a huge you know, number of Africans um, are calling for the diaspora vote for people in the diaspora to be able to participate in their respective country's election. As far as electing a president uh, primarily is concerned, uh, what do you feel about that? What do you have to say to that? That really needs to be done. It's a disservice and it's not fair, uh, and I think, uh, I hope more heads of states can uh, seriously take that into consideration. President Kagame is doing a great job uh, the, when these people get to vote, and it is also another way of making sure that you know where your people are, who they are, what they do, so when you need to reach out to them, you, you can reach out to them. So I think it behooves every president to try and make sure that uh, all the African citizens in the diaspora are able to vote. There's been this recent campaign by um, uh, Ghana under the leadership of the current president Nana Adudanko Ekufu Adu, which was termed the Year of Return, mm -hmm. which um, commemorated, um, I wouldn't use the word celebrate, but um, it commemorated the 400th anniversary of um, the uh, forceful uh, removal of Africans from the continent to be brought to the Americas as um, slaves. They weren't slaves when they were on the continent, but they were forced to remove them, brought um, to the U.S. And uh, 2019 marked the 400th anniversary of that period. And um, this year of return campaign was basically uh, the president of Ghana asking Africans to come back home, to be part of the continent they left, and to help move it forward. Um, it's been a hugely successful initiative. and. Um, what has been your take on that? That has been amazing and absolutely wonderful and refreshing. I have had so many people call me, talk about their experience. You have to understand, the descendants of the formerly enslaved people. Ten years ago, I had an experience with a friend who happens to be African American. When she looked me dead in the face and said, you know, you continental Africans, you never have to worry about where you come from. Have you ever imagined going through life 
not knowing where you came from? Prior to that point, I had never questioned myself. I didn't even know there was such a thing mm -hmm. as not knowing where you come from. But this is something that the descendants of the formerly enslaved, not only in the United States, in the Caribbean, in, in South America, to live with the fact that you do not know where you come from. Do you know what a void that is mm. in one's life? And yet they have been forced to push that void so deep in their subconscious. And yet that void affects every decision-making process you, make, you, you take. It is cruel, it is criminal, and I'm so glad that January of 2019, the African Hills of States came up with a decision with they called the R400, R standing for return, 400 for the 400 years, where they unanimously approved this decision that called on all children of Africa in the diaspora to come back home. That that year, 2019, once and for all, they declared that all people of African descent living outside Africa are Africans and that the African heads of states unanimously are saying, come back home. Right. So President Nanado, he took the lead. He went out and made the call and the children of Africa responded. Everybody that I've spoken to, they said this was a life-changing experience. So I encourage everyone, everyone that has never been to Africa, to go to Africa. It is an amazing continent and there's a heck of a lot going on in our beloved continent. So yes, congratulations President Nanado for a job well done. We want to see more of this happening, not only in Ghana, but around the continent. Do you have any um, advice for the young African, and when I say young, I include even those in their 40s, <laughs> uh, who are somewhat a little disillusioned um, and feel like this is going to be a hard thing to happen for Africa to become as developed as some of the European countries, for people to finally be able to live even just a decent life and earn a decent wage, and for, most importantly, not uh, to want to leave Africa in search of greener pastures. Right. I have to speak to both groups. I'm going to start speaking to the group that is outside the continent, are hesitant about going back to the continent. To them I say, stop being selfish. The United States was once upon a time where Africa is today. How do you think change is going to come to Africa if you're going to be selfish? This is a time that we need to put aside our selfish tendencies. We have to realize when we are doing it, we're not doing it for us. This is something we black people don't always tend to do. we got to think beyond me. It's about our children. It's about our grandchildren and generations to come. Now, if you're a young African man who's 40, who's 35, are you okay with the way things are? Are you okay with the status of you as a black man? Are you okay with that? And if you're not okay with that, are you ready to do something about it? Or are you just going to pass it on and expect your children to suffer the same fate that you're suffering? It's serious. It's time for a serious conversation with the image in the mirror. We have got to change this. And let us be the generation that's going to say, enough is enough. So for those outside the continent who are reluctant, who do you think is going to build the Africa that you want? Who do you think is going to modernize our Africa. If they modernize it, guess what? They own it. So you want to work for them outside Africa, and you want to work for them inside Africa, the choice is yours. The African heads of states are very clear. They're saying there cannot be any sustainable development in Africa without the involvement of the African diaspora. To those who complain that the leaders are giving contracts to the Europeans, to the Chinese, guess what? It's because you are missing in action. If you were there, see the expertise is in the diaspora. Right. Engineers, check, we got that. Educators, check, we got that. Doctors, check, we got that. Nurses, check, you got that. Any expertise that we need in Africa, it's in the diaspora. And all we gotta do is unite. And yet we wanna sit here thousands of miles away and point fingers at people on the continent and complain. Well, who do you think is gonna fix it? They need this fix. They want that airport built. Where are you? How are you going to receive the contract? They don't know where you are. They don't know how to reach you. And you're too busy complaining. So, before you start complaining about what people at home are supposed to be doing on the continent, ask yourself, what can I do? Be part of that community group. 
from Ghana, that community group that's African, be part of it. Be proud to be an African. Speak nicely about Africa. Tell non-Africans about the amazing continent right. and the amazing things going on on the continent. And do all the lies about our... And we are not the, 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 the dark continent. Last time I checked, the sun shines brightest over Africa. The origin right. of humanity. The continent with everything the world could ever need. The only continent that does not need anything outside Africa, you know that, right? Right, right. If the children of Africa were to go home today, Africa is done. We don't need anything from outside. The world needs Africa. Africa does not need the world. This is how beautiful this continent is. Right. People must know that. So to the young 40-year-old African living outside Africa, to the young 35-year-old African-American, Afro-Latino, -Afro Afro-Caribbean, I'm saying you are a descendant and an inheritor of an amazing continent. Stand up and play your part. So because basically, be the change you are looking for. Be the change. Be the change you are asking to be see. The change. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But our tendency is wait for the white man to do it for us. Based on your responses, um, do you feel like we're in an era where um, uh, Pan-Africanism is entering a new um, state? Does there uh, need to be a paradigm shift? Do we need a new Pan-Africanism? Or what is there is good enough for us to build on and push to the realities we all want to see for the continent? Son, what is there is simple fact that I am an African. I am a proud African. That's it. Accept that. In a nutshell, that's Pan-Africanism. That I am going to support my Africa. Africa first, United States first, German first, France first. Are you with me? Right. We too as Africans must say Africa first. It is just that simple. They, you can call it Pan-Africanism, I call it realism. It is what it is. Mm. We are Africans. We must look out for Africa. Are you with me? Right. I call it Pan-Africanism, okay? But I'm simply saying, Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. Plain and simple. Let's get on with it. Just like the Chinese are getting on with it. Just like the Indians are getting on with it. The Mexicans are getting on with it. We too must get on with it and take care of our Africa. It's that simple. What is the way forward right now? Way forward? I'm registering an entity called African Diaspora Development Institute. As long as we have lived, you go to Europe, there is no one place to go to for everything African. You come here in the United States, there is no one place to go to for everything African. So this institute is going to be a one-stop shop for everything African. You just wake up in the middle of the night and you want to know something about Africa first thing in the morning, call ADDI. You want to travel to Africa for tourism, call ADDI. We will facilitate your going to Africa. You want to go do business in Africa, call ADDI. We will facil facilitate your getting engaged and investing in Africa. But here's one thing that we need to make sure is clear. I often say, you don't go to China and find black people driving the Chinese development agenda. Mm -hmm. You don't go to Mexico and find black people driving the Mexican development agenda. You don't go to France, to Germany, to, 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 to India and find black people driving the development agendas for those countries. I say, therefore, cannot, must not, should not go to Africa and find non-Africans driving the African continental development agenda. We have got to come together. While we want our friends to join us, they too must respect the fact that Africa belongs to us and they will have to come behind us. But they can only do that if we are organized and are truly leading them to our beloved continent. We want everybody to come in and join us in building the Africa that we want, but they must respect us and understand that we dictate and we will drive the agenda, plain and simple. The onus is on that 40 year old you talked about to realize that hey, there's a driver seat waiting for you. It okay. is a void and it has your name. <laughs> Take your position and drive the agenda. Right.
and to the Africans on the continent, I also say, your brothers and sisters from the diaspora, they're not coming to take anything that you have. They're coming to add to what you have. Let's join hands with our brothers and sisters on the continent. And also to the diaspora, I say, please, like we say in Ghana, the been to attitude. I've been to America, I've been to Britain, I've been to Australia. Those been to's, we have attitude as diaspora. We go home thinking we're better than the ones on the continent. Far from it. Everybody has something to offer. The ones who have struggled through, are still struggling through conditions uh, on the ground at home, they have a lot to offer, just like we also have something to offer. Together, what is needed is collaboration. So let's go home. I often say, Pack your bags, chuck full of humility, humility, honor, and respect for the African. And guess what? Our brothers and sisters on the continent will roll out, roll out the red carpet for us if we go home with the right attitude. You don't know any more than our brothers and sisters on the continent. They don't know any more either. But together, we are unstoppable. And we can build the Africa that we want. So it's about attitude, attitude, and attitude. Being choose, get over your high horse. Right, right, right. Um, the ADDI. Uh, folks who might be watching right now that would want either more information or an opportunity to collaborate or to assist with that effort, is there any avenue for them to reach out? Yes, the website should be finished soon. It is theaddi.org. Okay. But you can also reach out as African Diaspora Development Institute.org, <coughs> the full name. Right. Otherwise, the short one is theaddi.org. So, folks, as you can see, the name of the website is on the screen. Check it out and reach out to Ambassador Arakana Chihambori Kwao. She's an amazing person. We've enjoyed very much talking to you. We look forward to coming to continue this conversation and see um, how far we have progressed as far as your personal agendas are concerned and the things you are passionate about, especially for the best, uh, betterment of the people of African descent, whether they be on the continent or in the diaspora. Do you have any final words? Final words, my beloved African diaspora, the most amazing, beautiful, intelligent, sophisticated, highly adaptable and totally indestructible Africans. I say to you, let's come together, let's unite. Be a member of the African Diaspora Development Institute. As soon as the web is complete, go and join. We want to know who you are, where you are, and what you do. So when those contracts are being rolled out, you don't want to be left out. Secondly, when the fund is fully registered, we do want you to participate. Start saving your money and be a shareholder in the African Diaspora Fund. And thank you for listening to me. And thank you, son for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you once again for your time. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my baby, you know money, no day. Baby, I be okay. I will not play. I go work hard. I know my body. Take a look at me now. Everything gonna change soon. Make you be with me now. Am I hold on and you're gone too soon? Baby, I better find you.